Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka, international nail artist and educator here. And uh, I'm just recording this uh, beginning introduction to this tutorial uh, when there is uh, lots of stuff going on with the coronavirus. Uh, I will try to don't talk too much about it because otherwise it will, we will just all get crazy. Um, it is a really worrying um, time for anyone who's got an underlying um, health problems and there is lots of you in uh, uh, self-isolation so I thought I will try to record as many tutorials uh, as possible just to brighten up your day, just to keep you busy so you are not bored and you don't think about uh, all this kind of madness because eventually at the end of the day everything will be over and we have to just like come back strong and uh, with the new skills so and uh, that's what i will be mainly concentrating on this channel like give you as many tips as many education and as many cheer uh, up as possible just so we all stop thinking about it actually i sometimes can't but uh yeah uh, yeah we we trying to stay strong as well and uh, we will all manage uh, i'm pretty sure so yeah doesn't matter no more coronavirus uh, subject um Oh yeah, because <laughs> uh, I think it is a sad subject. So we'll do a nice Swarovski Pixie Crystals uh, with a uh, big blink. And if you like this tutorial, hit a share button. If you're new in here, hit the subscribe button as there is going to be lots of lots of uh, new tutorial coming up in the coming days. Totally a matter of the time uh, that I would create the sparkles, Farosky Pixie, uh, Cinderella nails. And uh, I had this it before on one or two nails, but I thought like doing it on full set would be so amazing. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So that's the Swarovski Pixie. We are going to use it. And it's a cute mood. I will give you also the links in the description of this uh, tutorial as well. They're so nice and sparkly. So I've got some nails already in here and I have just removed the gel from it on the top and now I have to just prep them for the rebalance and I will show you how to do it. So my first step would be to push back the cuticles. And then um, just blend everything. And, and reshape the nails, apply the gel. So I'll show you step by step. So first of all, I'm just blending any old product with the natural nail and give a couple scratches all over. Check the length is longer. With this set, just because we have to apply the Swarovski Pixie over it, which is kind of misshaping the nail uh, a little bit, like because of those sticking out bits and pieces, uh, I'm not going to be, oh, maybe I said it wrong, but like I wanted to say I, I'm not going to be bothered too much about the structure. Uh, it has to be kind of decent, but I don't have to make it it's so perfect just because it's not going to be visible underneath of those crystals anyway. Okay, so that's the first nail done and the second one that's the nail which I don't like because one side my natural nail is too long it starts growing down the way so I'm just going to reshape it a little bit and blend everything on the natural nail make a couple of the scratches so the gel sticks in and this is pretty important like we need to remember that the gel sticks in only to the inhibition layer like the sticky surface or it sticks in only to the rough surface so the act acrylic would stick in even to the glass why the gel wouldn't it needs those rough surface okay so that's my nails prep I'm going to check it out here a tiny bit more. So remove the dust and then use the 
Neil dehydrator blue scrap that's the one I'm going to use I'm going to dehydrate my Neil and I have been so good <laughs> it wasn't dehydrate oh gosh I can't even remember the wrong one now dehydrate <laughs> so I'm just dehydrating the natural Neil plate I'm so proud now <laughs> Uh, some of you which have been watching me for a longer know that I'm um, total disaster when it comes to the word dehydrator and I pronounced it totally wrong. This blue liquid, that's an extra nail dehydrator and then I'm going to use the Universal Air Bond and I quite like the Universal Air Bond as well uh, just because uh, it gives a really great adhesion of the product to the natural nail but you have to wait for it to dry. So we're just going to wait a couple seconds to dry. And then we'll be using the fiber gel. I will have to go for a clear option. Normally I prefer using a pink. Um, I'm not a fan of the clear gels on the nails because uh, I've got clear on this one. So kind of to even out the color difference. And my gel brush. So the first step is to apply a thin layer on the entire nail plate. Just nice and thin layer. And then do the same on the other. And this is a very quick set. Uh, nice and thin layer. And also, because we are using the Swarovski Pixie on top, uh, I'm going to don't put too much product on. I don't want them too thick. When I'm picking up the gel, I'm picking up on the one side of my brush and then I'm just applying it on the nail one side other side one side other side usually make the gravity let, let the gravity to help you as well and place the finger down the way a little bit so i quite don't like the snail because it's growing down so to get rid of that i would have to either drill it from underneath or i would just have to cut it and start a fresh extension but because they're shorter it doesn't bother me as much for a no longer nail, definitely I will just cut this nail. Actually, we can drill it. Actually, I show you, um, we will drill it from underneath a little bit as well. Yeah, just to make this tutorial more interesting. So I'm just applying the gel nice and thin. I don't want it too much product for the Swarovski application. That should do, that should do, and I can give it a cure. So I'm still kind of like uh, working on those fiber gels and testing them. Uh, I definitely love the pink ones because uh, I think they're quite nice and they last really well. I am not the fan of the clear one just because, uh, I mean, for a structure, for a building, yes, it's, it's great, like, but uh, I quite like working with the really thin consistency, almost like a watery uh, gel when it comes to clear, uh, just uh, especially with the glitter encapsulation where I use the thicker gel for a base of the nail and then clearer, um, which is a very runny one on top of it, so I wouldn't use this one for a glitter encapsulation, it would be too thick for me, but for a structure and as a sculpting gel, uh, for a rebalance, it's a great, uh, a great one too. Most actually of the nail techs, I find it prefer the thicker consistency gel, uh, which don't run too much. So that's probably a better choice for you. I prefer like the the more runny, uh, the better it is because then the product does the work for me. So I don't have to spend like an hours playing with it. Um, we also had, my nails are curing, but we also had lots of good questions on the channel under uh, in the comments sections and I thought I will do some Q&I videos as well like answering all these questions and picking up the most interesting ones um, like with the product applications and uh, other things because I think it's worth to mention it. So that's my product cure. I'm going to use the uh, UV cleanser Actually, this is a good theory as well, and I uh, tell you a little bit about it. So, I have used the UV cleanser to remove the inhibition layer. That's the sticky layer of the gel, which never cures. And we only remove the sticky layer when we finish the service, like, and we want to file the nails. You don't remove that 
when you're applying another layer because as I say on the beginning the gel only sticks into sticky or rough surface otherwise you will have issues with the uh, service but let's talk about the blue scrub and the UV cleanser so there is lots of kind of two-in-one products in the market like where you can clean your nail plate with it and you can also remove the inhibition la layer with it I'm not the fan of this product and I tell you the reason for it so the blue scrub is a nail dehydrator and it contains some acetone, acetone and also kills the bacteria which are on your nail plate it's, it works only 30 minutes so if you have a beginner nail technician you might need to dehydrate the nails more often than once if your uh, if your uh, nail prep takes longer than 30 minutes always remember those kind of dehydrators any of them works about 30 minutes on the nail plate and this is a stronger product and then uv cleanser it removes the inhibition layer the sticky layer and if I would use it on the natural nail plate as a prep product, it wouldn't be strong enough. It wouldn't kill the bacteria. It wouldn't dehydrate the nails properly. It only removes the uh, inhibition layer. So we cannot prep the nails with this product. It's not strong enough. And then if I would use this product to clean the inhibition layer, it will make the nails dull. So if you find the gel polish top coat or like a gel is becoming dual that's because you have used too strong product for removal of the inhibition layer um, so yeah that's another tip for you and we can file this nail I will show you again on the one um, one nail so you know how to do it I would start off with the side walls nice and straight nice and straight actually the thumbs are always really bad to file but we filing nice and straight nice and straight for a coffee shape you have to bring the nail up the way so this is a really important step like filing those motion to remove the bulk from the side walls if you want to have a nice coffin shape and then we also have to blend all the product around the cuticle area so i'm just blending everything around the cuticle area And then after I have blended that, I just go in this motion to give a nice shape to all the nail. I don't have to touch the apex area because I want that to be the highest point on my nail. And you can see when I file, I'm not filing the apex. okay and now we can file underneath i will show you i wouldn't finish the filing on the top just because we have to file on the bottom so i'm using the e-file uh, machine k38 and i will just take some kind of old cuticle bead put it on the on and now we have to drill it okay this is going to be fun <laughs> so I'm just uh, scratching the surface of the extension underneath and what it will do it will change my C curve and also it will lift the snail up a little bit so it's not going to grow as much down So when you're filing underneath, you have to be kind of precise so you don't change the shape of your sicker too bad. So you have to check this view as well. And then this one, this nail is always really, really bad. Like I like it should be nice and straight, but once my natural nail it goes like so much down. So to lift it up. Again, I can file it underneath in here. Just to bring it higher up. It's not going to be a big difference. Uh, to make a really big difference, we would need to apply lots of product on the top and then drill all the bottom away.
Now also if we do the drill work like I have seen again lots of new tech uh, just drilling away the top and leave it leaving it the way it is you can do that like if you're drilling underneath you have to protect uh, the mat surface of the nails otherwise the dirt and everything is going to stick in there like a lot and that's already looks much better if I drill it a little bit more in this places the nail will go up a little bit more Okay, so I can switch off my drill and once we have done that I have to paint the surface with the clear uh, top coat so I'm going to use the nail dehydrator again just to remove any any oils which are on my natural nail plate and then apply clear top coat this is actually a really great solution as well for the clients which uh, new separate uh, from the product when they really really dry nice and thin layer and like make sure you cap the free edges here as well And the same on this new. And of course, when you put it to the lamp, you have to put it upside down. And give it a cure. So that's a really handy tip for you. <clears throat> if you're not happy with the shape or like the nails don't look uh, their best and you don't want to sculpt a fresh set, this is a kind of uh, good way to refresh it the cameraman is cleaning the, uh, the camera with the brush from all the dust we have created in here and yeah i really love this uh, and i said but I, the main thing is i will show you how to do it so they are not catchy because uh, that was a really common question as well um when some of you have seen the oatmeal i have done it with the pixie like how to do it so it doesn't catch so you can already see the structure here is a little bit better like it doesn't go as much down it's still like not my favorite shape of the nail i really don't like this nail after two rebalances now let me let me change the shape of it a little bit And also I find it as well like when filing the my natural nail is obviously up to this point here now so there's only a little bit of the uh, extension on it and the natural nail is much softer to file so usually we over file the natural nail and we don't file enough on the extension so make sure you do file those places as well and then just smooth out the free edge around the cuticle area It already looks a little bit better, but it's still pointing down the way. But from the top, it's not going to annoy me as much as it did before the rebalance. So, finish of this one. And basically, I wouldn't be bothered filing anymore, um, just a buffer, because uh, the crystals are going to change the shape of the nails anyway. So just buff them nice. And then I show you the crystals application. So I'm just buffing it. remove the dust i show you also the cuticle work quickly as well and then we can do the nicest part the crystal application 
So again, depending of the day, I'm using a drift, different um, beads. So today I will be using like something like this. Pretty low speed, like there is not much of the cuticle work. So this is a front and I'm just going one side. Then I put it back onto the reverse and I'm going other side. And then I can clean any excess of the skin on the top. I never do it too big cuticle work just because like I think if it's excessive work done, uh, the, the cuticle grow more, like not the cuticle, actually the nail folds. So you don't want to go overly too much in there. Go back to the front again. It's better to apply the cuticle oil really than doing too excessive cuticle work. So just a minimal work in there, but they already look better. I'm kind of not happy with this side wall, so I need to file it more. And that's because the natural needle filed much quicker compared to the extension part, the gel part. That's what I have told you in this, in the case of this needle. So I need to even this out. That's already looks better. And now because of it, I will have to apply a little bit of base more in this corner, like to even it out. So when I'm doing the needles, I'm kind of trying to um, work on my shape and the final look at every single step. So even if we do something wrong, we've got some next steps where we can fix it. But that's definitely better. I can remove the dust. And then we go into the crystals application. I have to dehydrate my nails with the blue scrub again. And then we can use the Swarovski Pixie on the entire nails. So to make them last, we are going to use the Soak of Base Gel and the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. And all you have to do is, like, remember on this one we have overfile a little bit, so we have to fix that. I'm just applying the base on the entire nail. Plus those extra bit in here. And then straight, without of curing it, I'm going to apply the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. The reason for it is, first of all, the no wipe top gel is much harder. And then secondly, it has no inhibition layer. So the crystals are going to shine nice and we don't have to remove the inhibition layer. And then on the tray, I'm going to apply the crystals. So quite a lot of you ask me, like, are they not catchy? And I will show you what to do so they are not catchy. So I'm just sprinkle the full needle front, sides, and the other side. And if I would leave it the way it is, then it will catch. You can see some crystals already sticking out like in here on the side, and it would be really, really catchy. So what I'm doing is either a sponge or a small brush, I'm just touching up those crystals. Same at the free edge, you don't want them to stick out too much. So gently touch them in. And you either move them or they kind of um, 
fall off. So after I have done that, also I check, uh, you can see there are a few crystals which are sticking out from the top as well. So what I'm doing is I'm touching them with the sponge as well. They just didn't uh, jump on the nail nice. And then I have uh, after we have done that, we can go with the second round. Now, just in case, put some piece of paper or something uh, in case if you drop all those crystals, it's much easier to tidy them up. Then I go second round and just do exactly the same. So move those crystals so they're not catchy. Plus, I want one more in the corner here. And you can see if I would make a much thicker structure, uh, the nails will look really heavy and thick. So for Swarovski crystals application, I'm usually kind of making flatter nails, much thinner. And then I can give it a cure. So that's all this nice sparkle done. And also, I think I don't like it when they stick out too much on the sides as well, like it doesn't look nice. So uh, I want them to kind of um, look more neat. I will show you on one more nail and then the rest I will do it on my own and show you the final look. So I just freeze the product and now I'm going to apply the base. Top coat. And then we can sprinkle the nail. <laughs> I think this is a great part. So I'm just sprinkle the nail. And you can see again like they are really sticking out. So I have to make sure they are in the right places. Then check the side view. Sprinkle a second row. So just exactly the same like we did it in the first new. And uh, you can, I would suggest to do maybe a two, three nails at the same time or one by one and just freeze the product. Um, otherwise, it might start to run and you really don't want that. If you're really fussy about some crystals placement, see, like I don't like this part, you can take a small brush and you can pick up just a single crystals because some of them are more like a bead and some of them are more like a crystals and I feel like they would be much nicer if they would be more crystals rather than those beads. So I'm just squeezing in those little crystals in the places where I feel I want more blink. A bit fiddly but I think the effect is much nicer. So there is not only the beads, but also a crystal cinder. That's much better. A bigger blink. And I can pop it into the lamp just for a couple seconds to freeze the product. I'm going to finish the rest of them on my own and I show you the final look.
So that's my blendy finish set and I show you what I do with the crystals as well so they um, go back in a place. So because we use this tree, tree, it's much easier to put them back into the bottle and to just slide them in. But I always, just in case I put the smaller one as well, uh, if there is any which drop, then I can close it. Also, I can see it, so I've got this much left and I have done about 20 needles, so I would assume it would last about 22, maybe more, 25 needles, like um, one bottle. Which is actually not too bad, better than I thought. And yeah, so that's those nice and blingy Swarovski crystals set. Thanks guys for watching and bye for now.